Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Today I want to take you on a trip through the wonderful, weird, and wacky world of Nintendo 64 controllers. Whenever I'm out searching for retro games, if I see a Nintendo 64 controller that I don't recognize, chances are I'm going to pick it up. Of course, every console has its fair share of third-party monstrosities, but I feel like the Nintendo 64 was in kind of a unique situation. I mean, this controller is already pretty contentious as it is. Throw third-party manufacturers into the mix, and you've got a recipe for craziness. But as you'll see shortly, it's not all bad news. Some of these controllers are actually pretty great, too. Let's take a look. Alright, so just to get started, I'm going to run through and showcase some of the more familiar designs. Uh, so first up, these are a couple controllers by Interact. They're essentially the same controller, same molding and everything, uh, but this one is called the Super Pad 64, and this one is the Shark Pad Pro 64. All in all, these controllers aren't too awful, but they just aren't very comfortable. At least for me, if I have my finger on the Z button back here, uh, the side of the unit just digs into my knuckle. Uh, the control stick is nice, so it's got that, but all in all, it's just an okay controller. Next up, I've got one more uh, traditional sort of controller here. This is the Mad Cat's Advanced Control Pad. Now, at first glance, this one might seem a little nightmarish. <laughs> um, it looks really angular and uncomfortable, but when you actually hold the thing, it's really not that bad. The analog stick is solid, the buttons are responsive, and the side grips even have ergonomic grooves for your fingers. The Z button could be a bit better, but if I'm pulling out a controller just to test a game and I don't want to put any wear and tear on an official controller, nine times out of ten, this will be the controller I use. Not too bad. Alright, that's about it for the so-called traditional designs. Uh, <laughs> Next up, I've got a pretty common peripheral you might have seen around your local game store. This is the Ultra Racer 64. The top piece here is spring-loaded, so you turn it in either direction and it automatically centers back in the middle. Uh, the trigger on the back here will activate the A and B buttons for accelerating and braking and the rest of the buttons are here on the face. The thing is, personally, I cannot figure out how to use this thing effectively. <laughs> it just controls like a mess. But hey, if you can beat the best of them in Mario Kart 64 using this thing, more power to you. <laughs> Moving on along the same lines, this is the uh, V3FX racing wheel. This comes with a set of pedals as well, you've seen these before. Uh, it's basically just what you'd expect. It works well enough, uh, although it is pretty cumbersome as you can see. <laughs> Okay, so this next one, I was really excited when I first saw this because it's one of the few controllers for Nintendo 64 that has two grips rather than three. So I thought it could potentially be one that would be really nice to have. However, as soon as you hold this thing in your hands, you can tell it's just awful. Funny enough, this one is also called the uh, Super Pad 64 by Interact. Some uh, brand confusion there. <laughs> but yeah, it's just awful, man. The, the left grip is too big, the right grip is too small. When you hold it straight in front of you, the joystick is at this awkward sideways angle. Anyway, it's just kind of a mess, but an interesting novelty nonetheless. Alright, so here's one that's kind of cool. This is the Docs brand wireless controller. So the, the controller itself isn't really anything to write home about. It works well enough, but of course the cool part is that it is wireless. It uses an IR transmitter, the same technology behind most TV remotes, and lets you play untethered from the console. However, because it does use infrared, uh, the controller always needs to have a direct line of sight to the receiver. And on top of that, it seems like the the memory card slot here in the receiver just straight up doesn't work. I have seen other people complaining online about the same issue, so I know it's not just me, but it does seem like a somewhat strange issue for an otherwise pretty convenient controller. But anyway. Okay, so now we're at the fun part. Uh, I've got three controllers left, all of which I think are really cool. So uh, I've saved the best for last. This first one is the Arcade Shark Fight Pad. <laughs> and man, this thing is solid. <laughs> But yeah, it's just an arcade-style fight stick for the Nintendo 64, so there's not much to explain, but it's great for a number of titles on the platform. Next up is the Hori Pad Mini, and uh, you may have seen this controller before if you follow the Smash Brothers community, uh, because many competitive 64 players will rave about this controller. It's got a traditional two-grip design, and the analog stick is much closer to the, the GameCube-style stick. Very nice. Unfortunately, it's become pretty rare over the past few years, so if you want to grab one of these, it might cost you a bit of cash. But this is definitely one of the best Nintendo 64 controllers available, and honestly one of the very few controllers that I would say functions better than the original. Alright, last but certainly not least is this guy. This is the Retrobit Hyper Mode controller. 
So this controller is a bit more recent. It was uh, produced well after the 64's lifespan. Uh, it just came out in recent years. But for some reason, it seems that Retrobit quit manufacturing it. I'm not sure why, uh, but I was lucky enough to, to find a couple of them. Basically, it's nearly identical to the original Nintendo 64 controller, but like the Dox controller I showed you earlier, it has a wireless receiver so you can play away from the console. Uh, unlike the Dox controller, the Retrobit Hyper Mode runs on a typical radio frequency, so it's much more reliable and doesn't require a direct line of sight. This is a super convenient way to bring the 64 into the modern era and kick back on the couch with a great game. If you see one of these in person, don't hesitate to pick it up. Okay, I do want to mention a couple other controllers here that uh, I've seen but I don't have myself yet. The first of which is this Boomerang controller from Newbie. Kind of reminds me of that, uh, that early PS3 controller prototype. Anyway, and uh, the second which is the Glove by Reality Quest. <laughs> You've seen the NES Power Glove, but you may not have known there was an equally cumbersome glove controller for the Nintendo 64. This thing looks ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> Unfortunately, this one's sort of rare too, so I haven't gotten my hands on it yet, but I'd love to have it eventually for my collection. Okay, that's all I've got. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any of these controllers at home, or if you have any other weird or interesting controllers that I didn't cover. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content. And feel free to share the video with any friends you think might find it interesting. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye! Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, here are a couple more videos you might like as well. I also want to let you know I've launched a Patreon page. If you enjoy my content and would like to get early access to my videos, as well as some other exclusive rewards, feel free to head over there and check it out. See you next time!